How's it going everybody? My name is Dave Whipple and you're watching Bush Radical. Recently I got tagged in the Show Us Your Steak Challenge. So today Daisy and I are going to take a hike, cook steak. Stay tuned. If there's one thing Daisy's like is to go for walks. It's a nice hemlock. I'm going to try to grab myself enough hemlock for a cup of tea or two. About like that. I mean, that's more than enough. But I'll wad that up and just chuck it down in the can. I like a strong hemlock tea. Go find ourselves a good spot to set up a little campfire out of the weather a bit. Come on, Days, let's go. We got lots of dry grass here. I'm just gonna load up real quick. A little bit of tinder. I won't have to look for it when we get where we're going. Nice. That fire and tea. Well, the wind seems to be coming out of the south, and right over on the other side of this pond is a couple little stands of, of hemlock over there. I think we're going to walk around and go to that. I would walk across it, but it's been too warm for that. Now, there's a pond over here, and there's a pond over here, and this looks to be just a tiny bit of a beaver dam. Uh, let's give it a shot. All right. See, somebody's been duck hunting. There's a shell, there's another shell. Kind of a little squirrely. Not bad though. Ah, nice day to get out. There's been hardly any good days lately. Well, I don't imagine finding any place better than right here. It's funny, I stopped and brought hemlock and I ended up underneath the hemlock tree. There's the fixings. What have I got this five gallon bucket for? Good question. For that. What are you doing? Here. Let's grab us a spot of wood. a good deal of fine stuff up in these hemlocks. I'm not even going to need any tinder probably. Now the wind is coming out of that direction. So I've basically built this fire backwards. Everything should be pretty much on the other side. Because that uh, the wind's gonna blow the fire into the wood. Why am I telling you guys how to start a fire? I'm gonna use my favorite, a big lighter. Daisy knows that there's some 
There's some beef coming along here in any second. She's ready for it. Ooh. Hmm. Now the best way to handle wood that doesn't want to break is just to put it on the fire and wait. What do you think, Daze? That's right. She's a good one. Boy, she's a good girl. You could break these in half, but I'll just let the fire do it. Just keep enough small coals in the middle of that fire, the smaller material. Keep that fire going, keep dropping coals in, burn the bigger stuff in half. Alright. I'm gonna try to keep the like the wood out of it as much as possible. I got that beautiful hemlock. Hemlock makes fantastic tea. I should know, I drank like a thousand gallons of it on Vancouver Island. But you know what? I never got sick of it. Also stayed real hydrated, you know? You're always drinking tea, drinking something hot. That's probably about enough. Hard to have too much. Just makes for better tea. Quart of water. No fancy rocket science for me. I'm just gonna stick that pot right there and let her boil. I gotta go cut a couple chunks of heavier wood so I can lay them side by side, have my coals up the middle for when I cook my steak. This whole challenge of uh, show me your steak, the idea behind it is to raise awareness for men's mental health. As far as men's mental health, I'm gonna tell you two stories about two people I know. Two people who, uh, who've been through some pretty serious stuff and the polar opposite way that they're dealing with it ultimately. Someone with a ton of problems is in everybody's life, whether they know it or not. A lot of people walk around just you know, everything's awesome when it's not. Let me tell you a story. I know a guy who was a police officer. Really wound tight. Lots and lots of stress in that profession. Lots of guys in the military will come out after four years of getting shot at and they'll have PTSD. Police officers, they're always running that risk every day and a lot of folks retire from being a police officer. So you think about you know, 25, 30, 35 years of, of that kind of strain, not knowing who you're dealing with every day, not knowing if the next person who you stop for speeding is going to put a bullet in you. Well, this guy that I knew, uh, he became a, a closet alcoholic. Nobody knew it. He'd been addicted to pain meds for 10 years. That was hush-hush. One night, he, uh, he overdosed. His son found him, and he wasn't breathing. He was unresponsive. The, the EMS showed up frantic, you know, revived him, and, uh, and he did survive. And he is, he's still around today. But he's damaged himself. He can't remember anything, still drinking. He's still on heavy pain meds. He's, uh, he's getting a divorce now because his wife left him. It, it's such a terrible, terrible situation. Here's some guy that could, uh, he could be a benefit to other people. He could say, 
I've been through this and, and I've got cleaned up. But he hasn't got cleaned up. He's trying to pretend he can handle that stress. And in the process, he's basically destroyed every part of his life. Now I know another fella, a friend of mine I used to work with in Wisconsin. He got arrested two years ago and he was, uh, he was on meth, he was on heroin, he was on pain meds. This is a guy I poured concrete with 20 years ago. Cool guy, really good guy. Liked to party a little too much and one thing led to the next and he got, he got in way over his head. He's in recovery. He's uh, doing fantastic. He's happy and healthy for the first time in who knows how long. But he's also going to take his story and he's going to go around and speak to schools this spring. And he's going to benefit other people by his experience. When it comes to men's mental health, one thing we have to understand is uh, everyone is a mess to one degree or the next. The guy you think has everything together, uh, he's a mess. Uh, I'm a mess. You're a mess. Varying degrees, we're all a mess. Stress can, uh, it can destroy your life. Addiction can destroy your life. And of those two people I just told the story of, one is in denial. Unfortunately, he's, he's on a highway to his own grave. He's drinking and driving. He's on all kinds of meds. He has no recollection of what he's done. He's had a little bit of a violent past in the last year. It would be a miracle if he stays out of jail for the next year. And he was a police officer. Here's the guy who thinks he's got control. He thinks he's, he thinks he's the master of his own ship and he's literally just burned his own ship in the middle of the ocean. The guy's ruined his life. Drugs, alcohol, stress. The idea that he can control everything. And uh, as soon as the bedroom door shuts, he's He's stoned out of his mind. And then the other story, you know, there's there's a guy who uh, who partied his 20s and 30s away, finds himself his, in his mid 40s, and uh, he's he hit rock bottom. But he understood it. He he knows where he ends, and 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 where he's got to just lay it all down and just turn his life around, or he's you know he's not going to have a life, regardless of what you're dealing with regardless of the stress in your life, and all of us have it. Women, you know, this is about men's mental health. Women get it as bad as we do. We, we're all a mess. The human condition is terrible. Anybody who tells you otherwise is, uh, is naive of 5,000 years of recorded history. The human condition is pretty awful. Don't trust that you can pull yourself out of something. Maybe you can't. Maybe it's time to say, you know what, I need a little bit of help. I need somebody to walk me through something. I don't know what's going on in your life. I don't know what's going on in my life half the time. But if you have messed up, if stress and anxiety and, and mental health and, and just the, the weight of the world and the, and the facts of existing in this world, if it's got you to a point where you've done a lot of terrible things, just realize you can either uh, be stubborn about it and say, I've got it all under control and just let that path continue to ruin you or you can say you know what I, I'm gonna get some help I'm going to uh, I'm gonna use my experience to help somebody else let's rinse out this coffee cup I don't want my hemlock tea to taste like coffee man I better let that pot just cool off for a few. I'll take this guy and just set him over there. You ever wonder what it's like to be in the woods and get attacked by a wolf? Oh, she's gonna get me. Daisy and I have had lots of adventures, haven't we, Daisy? Lots and lots of adventures. That's right. What is it? What are you hearing? What are you hearing? What is the Daisy here? There's wolves out there, aren't there? The wolves are gonna get us. You just kind of bit my ear, you know that? I mean, you tried to lick it, but you kind of bit it. Ha, ah, get your nose out of there. There's the dog. There's the steak. I wonder if the dog is aware of the steak. Yes, she is. This old coffee pot has been everywhere with us. Best $2 I ever spent. So what kind of amazing steak did we bring? 
What kind of fine cut of beef are Daisy and I going to split today? Well, as a matter of fact, uh, local ground beef. Nothing fancy at all. One of my favorite things to eat, just as a as a snack, is just a just a chopped beef steak. Just grab, a, make a giant burger patty, chuck it in the pan, brown it up real good, throw some A1 sauce on it. Life is kind of like that. It it's about as special as you make it. You really don't need to have the finest thing to have the finest thing. You know, sometimes it's better just to take the the simple things. You know, maybe you don't have an extra 15 bucks for a really good steak. Everybody's got 250 they can buy a pound of ground beef with. I'll show you here in a second. I'm gonna go ahead and let that burn down one more time. And then from those coals, that's what we'll cook our steak with. You know, when it comes to cooking in the woods, I've never done more cooking in the woods than I did back in 1994. I graduated high school in 1994. And when I got out of school, I had a lot of free time, you know, me and my redneck buddies, we, you know, everybody was into drinking beer and camping out and bonfires and whatnot. I had a friend of mine named Matt Stilson. And Matt and I were both big into camping. We loved to go just, you know, out in the bush. I'd never even heard the word bushcraft back then. I don't think anybody ever said it. But Matt and I, we would go out about two or three times a week. But we generally take a package of venison we take Matt's old battery radio. we listen to two different cassettes. It kind of dates the time, doesn't it? We had Dio, Holy Diver, and Journey's Greatest Hits. Why in the world those two were the, the albums that we listened to all the time? I have no idea. It was like in constant rotation. Ronnie James, Dio, and Journey. We'd spend a couple nights a week out in the woods cooking. And each one of us had our own cast iron pan that was our favorite pan. And we'd take turns of who brought the pan and who brought the food and, and sit around and cook food in the dark around a campfire, listen to heavy metal. <laughs> and we'd sit around the fire, listen to the coyotes. You know, life goes on. Matt got married to a girl we, we grew up with from the neighborhood, really nice girl. And I got married and Brooke and I moved to Alaska. And man, I hardly ever see Matt anymore. But there's a lot of good memories of 94, 95, 96. Uh, Matt and I and a couple other guys we hung out with just sitting around a, a cook fire, basically, out in the middle of the woods at night, cooking. Daisy likes to cook, too. Don't you, Daisy? But on a completely different topic, I saw a bear last night. That was pretty cool. That's right. Daisy don't like bears, either. No, she don't. Daisy don't like bears and wolves. She's trying to figure out what I'm saying to her, because every time I say her name, she about freaks out and jumps in my lap. Maybe she knows we're about ready to cook. I know this is supposed to be show me your steak challenge, but I kind of I kind of read it as uh, sit around on your butt by the fire and tell stories. Oh, that'll do it. All right, this is what we're working with. We got some A1, thick and hearty. Oh, mustard seed, yummy. Actually, that's complete horseradish. This isn't mustard seed at all. I'll show you what it is. This is uh, half sea salt, half black pepper. Just thrown in an old spice jar. Great thing just to carry around. Carrying salt and pepper combined you can't go wrong with this. You can season anything you, you happen to come across that you want to eat. It's a good thing just to carry with you. I got a fork, paper towel, little pan. All right. Seems to have more fire outside of my little fire spot than I do in it. That looks about right. Beautiful thing about a setup like this is you got direct heat underneath your pan. There we go. No, oh, that's a thing of beauty.
This is the camping version of turning up the burner. I think my tea's about ready. Oh, that's about perfect. I think I'll put the lid on because I don't want it to get any cooler. Oh, that is fantastic. Almost buttery. Got kind of a tea flavor to it. Kind of a Joanne Fabric Hobby Lobby flavor. <laughs> I don't know if it's a, I don't know if it's a spruce in it or the. Uh, Get kind of that spicy pine wreath thing going. Oh, oh that's so good. Chucked full of vitamin C. Mmm, I can start to smell that burger. When I get this burger done, I'm gonna eat it. And then we'll cook the other half for Daisy. Who's taking a nap over here right now? Oh man, I can smell that burger. It's so good. Better flip this. I'll take the dog hair off my fork. You want to talk about the bane of my existence? It's the dog hair. One dog, and I've got enough hair for like six dogs. Oh, yeah, dude. You know, this is something that should be like a like a 24-hour video where you can just listen to meat sizzling in a pan over a fire. You talk about a wonderful therapeutic sound. Just meat in a pan over a fire for 24 hours. Forget that sounds of the ocean and seagull junk. Meat the pan over a fire. You know what? I forgot to bring a plate. Oh well, I think we're about done. Oh. Luckily, keeping it on such a small fire like that, this handle has neglected to get hot. For my burger, is nice and done. Oh yeah. And there's grease in the bottom of the pan. I want that too. Delicious. Oh man. Maybe it's too hot. It's still making noise. Oh man, that's so good. Mmm. Mmm. Because I haven't squished it and it's cooked so slow, it's crispy on the outside, it's uh, nice and juicy on the inside. Mmm. You know, big sausage patty would be pretty awesome too. Mmm.
a handle's starting to get a little hot. Should have brought a plate. I'm gonna take that and dip it in the grease. That was a bad mistake. Oh, that floor hot. Ouch. <laughs> yeah, that was a little bit hotter than what I thought it was gonna be. You get the next one, Daze. Mmm. That's so simple. It's so good. Now, the only thing I would say is if you can, if it's possible, go find yourself some local beef. Something that comes from a farmer within, you know, 20, 30 miles. Because, uh, you know, if you go to a really big store, you have no idea what you're getting. It might be like a product of the U.S., Mexico, and Canada. Whatever that's supposed to mean. Mmm, that's so good. Just good cowboy food. It's just meat. It's got nothing else going on except a little salt and pepper. And meat. Salt, pepper, meat. I do think I'll give it a little steak sauce. Not because it needs it, that's for sure. Oh, that pan's get, getting really hot on my legs. Ooh, can't tell if it's dirt or if I burn myself. Oh, nice little bit of steak sauce on there. Oh yeah, I cooked that other half. I don't know how much that Daisy's gonna get. So I wanna thank Jeff, Coach Allen off the gridiron. He's the guy that uh, passed the challenge on to me. It's been all over. Everybody out there has done a show us your steak challenge. And it's a great thing to do. Literally, simple and beautiful. Go out in the woods, cook a steak, eat the steak, talk about the problems that all of us have. Maybe cook two steaks, eat two steaks. You know, one thing I can say too, is just eating out of this cast iron pan, it's keeping it nice and hot. You put something like this on a plate, throw it on a cold plate, it's gonna suck the heat right out of it. Sitting in this plate, it's nice and hot. Mmm. Mmm. I didn't realize how hungry I was. You know, Almost would have been cool to cook it with the barbecue sauce, with the A1 on top, kind of like a meatloaf. You know how people put like a layer of ketchup on top of a meatloaf? It gets that kind of awesome gooey ketchup top thing that is just so good. I bet that'd be good on one of these too. Sun's coming out. Kind of. What is that burning ball of eye poison? Winter in Michigan is not known for being sunny. I think Michigan is like the United Kingdom of the Midwest. You know, there's a lake on both sides, there's water on both sides, and it's constantly foggy and rainy and crappy and cloudy. I'm gonna enjoy the sun while it's here. Hmm. My grandpa Whipple always used to take whatever he was eating and uh, he'd stab it with his fork and he'd point it at you and he'd wink and he'd be good for what ails you. Evidently green onions were good for what ails you. Because that's the thing I remember him you doing the most. He'd poke his green onion, point it at you, smile, go good for what ails you. And he'd eat his green onion. I like green onions too, but I didn't then. I remember one time, uh, one time my grandpa, who was the most awesome guy, the most awesome guy you ever, ever want to meet. It, one time, grandpa was, he loved horseradish. 
I remember being a kid, I was like, what's that, Grandpa? He's like, that's horseradish. I'm like, is it any good? He's like, it's fantastic. Try it. He takes a, you know, a, a, not a little bit on the end of a fork and gives it to me. He's like, try it out. Well, a little bit of horseradish will kill a guy. <laughs> Even if you just, you know, eat it. If it's strong horseradish, there's like this line, you know, horseradish is really good, but if you get just a little too much of it, it's like getting maced. And that was like, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't hardly see. I had so much water running down my face, like, ah! <laughs> Too much horseradish. Let's cook another one. All right, somebody's been waiting patiently for their steak. So it's time for Daisy steak. Let's cook Daisy a steak. So we'll take the other bit of this ground beef, throw it in the pan. That's, that's a great sound. Nice to see a little bit of sunshine in the woods. When Brooke and I got out of Vancouver Island, they put us up in this little little tiny cabin, and, and you know, kind of hiding us from the town, the, the town of Port Hardy and the other contestants. They didn't want us to know nothing, and they didn't want Port Hardy, Vancouver Island, to know anything about the show and oh, who, who got out at what time. So we were like sequestered in this little cabin, and we had the food network. And Brooke and I watched food shows round the clock. We would eat and take a nap and wake up and we'll eat and then watch Food Network. And we just basically laid in bed and ate for like four days and watched the Food Channel. You know, there's just something, something wonderful about just watching someone cook food. I think I better flip this. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Look at that, it's so nice looking. I think I'm gonna chop up all this ground beef here. Get all this chopped up for days. And I'll put it in the snow. She can eat it up off the snow. Since we don't have any kind of a plate, I don't wanna throw it in the grass. Give it a minute to cool off too if it gets in the snow. And in this piece, I think I'll eat that one. I think old Daze is ready for her steak. Come here, Daze. Come here. Oh, look at Give it some time to cool. I think she's enjoying her dinner. She's gonna want that water here in a minute. That's so good. What do you say, Daisy? You want to split this last piece? Do you? Here, you have this piece. Come on. That's right. I'll take this one. Mmm. That's good. Well, as far as I'm concerned, that was an evening well spent. A little bit of sitting around, doing nothing, telling stories, hanging out by a fire, cooking meat, drinking some tea, hanging out with the dog. What more could you want? Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. My name's Dave Whipple, and you've been watching Bush Radical. Be radical, eh?
See you soon. You know, one thing I totally forgot to do. I need to pass this challenge on to three more YouTubers. So, uh, I don't know who's done it, who hasn't done it. I, I'm kind of at a loss. So I'm gonna throw out three different names of uh, folks I'd like to pass this challenge on to. So Gareth Hampton at Mountain Coffee Outdoors. Steve Gannam out at 73 Forge. I'm gonna give you this challenge too. Go out in the woods, cook a steak, talk about men's mental health. And lastly, I wanna tag a friend of mine who has been absent from YouTube, and that's Chris Wilkes. His channel is Black Creek Bushcraft and Survival. And Chris, he's, uh, he's a guy that does a lot of counseling. He's a, uh, I don't wanna, I don't wanna say the wrong thing. He's a, uh, he's a psychologist, I believe is the right word. Chris is a good cook for starters. And second, uh, if there's probably not another person out there who has Chris's insight into the issues that men face all the time, the stress in life and men's mental health. So Chris, if you could, you know, maybe get off your butt and <laughs> get back into YouTube and take up this challenge, I would love to hear what Chris has to say. So there's my three picks. Gareth at Mountain Coffee Outdoors, uh, Steve at 73 Forge, and my friend Chris Wilkes at Black Creek Bushcraft and Survival. You guys have been tagged. If you haven't already done it, challenge is in your lap now.